Hey, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Hey, hello, hello, hello. A little, uh, little Motley crew there for you in the afternoon or the evening. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I will dance. Uh, just got checked into the uh, Hard Rock Hotel here in San Diego, California. I'm on the 12th floor. Got a gorgeous uh, view of the bay over my shoulder. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bright out. Uh, I'm here for the next couple of days for a uh, traffic and conversion uh, actual uh, three-day conference. I'm actually here to learn some stuff to help expedite things out, uh, convert more. Uh, hello <laughs> from sunny St. Louis, Bill. Uh, thank you, Christine. We're going to try to rock it. Dance now. Uh, Phil, uh, Phyllis, I'll just sit here in my room and just kind of kick it off here. Uh, that's right, Richard. Got to kick off a little Motley Crew there. A little Dr. Feel Good. Better than the animal on me. Uh, yeah. Hello, San Diego. But anyway, from the 12th floor of uh, the Hard Rock Hotel down here in the Gas Hub District, excited to be here. The next couple days are going to be a lot of fun for me. Uh, I go to things all the time. Actually, I've got a couple of my mentors are going to be here that have actually taught me a lot about social media and marketing. And I'm excited to be here. As always, um, hey, Frank, how's it going, buddy? I know some of you guys are snowed in on the East Coast, which I hope everything is okay with you. I actually experienced that a few weeks back in New York with the uh, snowfall or the blizzard of the decade, or whatever they call it, right? Um, anyway, let's let's get this thing rocking and rolling here. Cheers, everybody. No, I'm just, it's just cranberry juice, I promise you. It looks like it's, it does look like it's whiskey with the sun passing through, doesn't it? But anyway, it's literally just cranberry juice. Hmm. Mini bar cranberry juice. Yum. Anyway, so uh, let's get this thing rocking. The Monday note, everybody here. You a lot of everything. Realize that uh, in the haste to get out of town on that early flight, did not pack my laptop computer cord. So, according, uh, that's right, Jack. That's right, exactly. Um, yeah, I got right by an hour. So let's get rocking the link. So, yeah. Uh, always curious people who uh, are curious who is always on the call. We have different real estate investors. We have nut investors on the call. We have people interested in investing in real estate of some sort of fashion. It's always a good mixed bag. Uh, we had uh, over 200 plus people RSVP for the webinar. So as always, these are being recorded. There is no background music. You should be able to see everything on the screen, Dave. All right. All right. So, anyway, let's move on here. Uh, if you'd like to download these, these are being recorded. will be uploaded to my Vimeo account. You can go to vimeo.com backslash weclosenotes.com. I would go ahead and recommend that you all go there and subscribe. Go ahead and do it right now. Or you're, otherwise, you're not going to do it later. You're going to ask me, hey, how do I get that? And maybe a day before I respond or a few hours. So, literally, if you go to vimeo.com backslash weclosenotes, you can go and subscribe there. You get a copy and be able to download all the recording webinars. So if you register for it or miss it, you have a chance to go back and watch it again. All right. Also, I suggest you guys connect with me because we all do sorts of social media stuff. Uh, definitely connect with me on Instagram. we got some great stuff that we're doing there, especially uh, some note nugget videos and things like that. Uh, if you guys aren't, uh, some of you guys are, have a LinkedIn profile, some of you have a Facebook, but a lot of you guys don't have these four things down below here. I'd highly recommend you do it. Kind of, kind of pull yourself to the 21st century, everybody. So, as we dive into it, I always like to share my goals of where we're at for the year. Uh, the numbers there, some of you guys are familiar with that, 1,000 and 1,000. We want to close in 1,000 note deals this year. Plus, we also want to put 1,000 people through our workshops. We're excited. Uh, we're on track, actually. On the over, uh, We're over 20% of the way to the first goal as far as people through the workshops, and we're roughly going to be coming up on about a tenth of the way to it with note deals. So uh, we are moving along briskly right on pace to accomplish both of those goals, which we're excited about first and foremost. All right. Upcoming workshops here. We do have one in Chicago. I have some news. The St. Louis workshop has been rescheduled for a later date. Uh, yeah. So unfortunately, just based on everything we got going on in the next couple of weeks, we've had to reschedule the St. Louis workshop for a later time. So our next Note Buying for Dummies workshop is going to be in Chicago. We will be doing one remotely in April, I believe the weekend before. We'll be doing a, a virtual workshop, a three days live one. But uh, the next, uh, the St. Louis one for March has been postponed at this time. Okay. Uh, yeah, just we just literally decided it like yesterday, with just the way the schedule is and things that are going on. Uh, it just made sense for us to do that. So anyway, 
Also, some exciting news. The, I'm pleased to announce that we have the Noteworthy Convention coming to the East Coast. That's part of the reason we had to reschedule things just with everything going on. Uh, some of you guys are familiar with the 28th Annual Noteworthy Convention that usually takes place in Las Vegas, Nevada in October. Jack Sternberg and I have been working on this stuff. Recently, Jack asked me to come on double market the stuff. So we are excited to announce that it will be taking place in uh, April, April 10th through the 13th. It's a Thursday through Monday. Thursday, I mean, sorry, it's not Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's not a Thursday. Thursday, if you want to arrive and register, you can. But there's nothing going on Thursday. Uh, but if you're flying in for it, that's when I would uh, fly in, so that's why I threw that up there. Um, it's at the Hilton Newark Penn Station Hotel. It's early bird tickets will go on sale tomorrow. Look for an email from me later with those links going out for that. Uh, three days of content, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then we add in a one-day live note auction from the different uh, hedge funds that are going to be bringing. First, seconds, non-performing performing stuff. We'll be bringing that stuff in on that Monday for you guys to take a look at. So you got three days of learning how to find deals, how to actually fund these things, and then different exit strategies of service, plus all the vendors in place to help you with your business. All right? And then we're going to offer it up some opportunities for you. If you want to purchase some things, there'll be some bidding. You'll have to vet as a bidder beforehand, but uh, we're definitely excited about that. Huh. There will be a room block available. Basically, we're taking over almost the entire Hilton Hotel there with all their convention space. We're taking it completely over. Uh, and then with rooms as well, there'll be an email that goes out later with a link for you uh, to sign up there. But we're excited about that. Literally, you fly into the Newark Airport, and then there's a shuttle bus. Or you can take the train to Penn Station and then walk across. Yeah, Bill, it's going to be a, a, a fun thing. Uh, I'm kind of managing it, so we're going to have some fun flair to go along with it. It's not going to be boring. I, I trust me. That. Also, a big key factor, it will not be a pitch fest. No pitch fest involved with it. There will be a lot of content. Uh, there will be like there's over 30-plus speaking slots. Um, there will have several panels. The speakers, obviously, they, they, come to, they do have some selling stuff, but they'll have to keep their sales pitch to 15 minutes. It's going to be an hour of content with 15 minutes of sales a lot for questions and sales pitch. Otherwise, I will pull their ass off stage. Okay? Uh, there'll be some tracks of first, seconds, non-performing, raising capital, bringing in a, a couple guest speakers I think you all will really enjoy. So, uh, early bird tickets are like 149 per person right now, and they will go up before the end of the month. Okay? Um, Thursday, they're not going to start on Thursday. Thursday, you can fly in any time. We'll end Monday probably around 3 o'clock. Okay? So you can fly in Thursday, you can fly in late because we'll start right at uh, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock uh, on Friday morning. All right, let's move into the heart of the matter here for you. Uh, you can connect with other investors as well here. I'm um, just kind of doing some promos for some of the groups we have available for you guys to connect. Go to the Note Closers groups on LinkedIn. I highly recommend you go on there and connect. Make sure to ask questions, leave comments, start discussions. It's an open group for all sorts of note investors. All right, it's a growing group, which is really nice to see as well. Uh, also, check out our Note Nuggets. We've actually got a few more Note Nuggets besides just nine. You can find that at Vimeo as well. Or you can go and connect with me on Instagram and get a direct link to it as well. Look for one Scott Carson. All right. Well, let's talk about the Monday Note here, everybody. Let's get into the heart of the matter because that's where a lot of people do. And, yes, I did use a little advertising with a Fifty Shades of Grey movie coming out. And if I offended anybody, my apologies. Relax. I am not a sadomasochist. <laughs> I don't believe in punishment or any of that stuff. I just thought it was a great little idea. And some of the people I bounced off to said that's a, it's a phenomenal idea based on the discussion we're going to talk about today. Because obviously things can go different ways. They can go be good. They can be ugly. They have a whole different spin on things in the note business depending on where you're at. So that's what I want to dive into. So here we are right here. Um, if you've registered for the webinar, Yes, I will send you a copy of that. Is that all right? So you do not have to ask me for a copy of this. All right? I'm glad you enjoyed that, Bill. Good. All right. Oh, one more question here. You're right, Mike. Now, if you guys are going to ask questions, make sure they're relevant for the topic we're on right now. Don't ask a question, a generic question that's off subject. Okay? There's plenty of places at the end of this webinar for you to ask questions regarding other things. All right? So let's dive right into the heart of the matter. Well, you're buying a non-performing note, and this will help you with your due diligence, talking about exit strategies and things like that. All right? So just pay attention with me. I'll probably end up answering along the way. So let's go first. 
Let's go, let's go the occupied note route. All right, if it shows it's occupied, you drive by it, okay? And it's occupied, all right? That's a good thing, you purchase the note. After you buy the note and it's occupied, you're gonna re obviously reach out, borrow contact, attempted. And that's actually spelled wrong. You have, uh, if you have unsuccessful contact, you know, you may want to immediately start the foreclosure process, okay? You may also want to sell that note off to somebody else, okay? You can wholesale the note or, you know, retail sale to somebody else. That's an option here for you, okay? Once you foreclose the note, you can then do whatever you want with the property. You can rent it out or sell it, okay? But let's go this route. Let's say you get successful contact with a borrower, and they have a different one. They, and that's the basic thing. Hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to stay or do you want to leave? Well, let's say they want to stay. Well, okay. The first thing your servicer is going to have to do and you look to is do a full or partial reinstatement. Okay? What that means, hey, can you start making your payments on time? All right? Maybe you ask for, uh, maybe they're a year behind or two years before. Maybe they pay a part of that as, as far as partial payment reinstatement. Okay? Uh, the nice thing is once you receive payments on this stuff, after a while, you can sell it as a re-performing note in 12 months. Some uh, some funds will try to sell you a re-performing note after three to six months. I don't consider that, okay? Um, if you're receiving payment, you retain the force, all right? The force is with you on that, <laughs> okay? All right? That's if they want to stay. Now, you always have the right to, to do a short payoff up here. If they want to stay in the property and would like to pay you off, do a short payoff. Maybe they owe 150 but the property is worth 50 If they got 50 grand, that becomes yours. Okay? You negotiate that down and you get those funds. And then they basically own the property. All right? It's like they're doing their own short sale for themselves. Okay? Now, you may also, depend on the situation, may want to do a modification. All right? And with a modification, they start making payments. Do a deferment plan. After a while, okay, if they sign the documents, then you can either do A, retain the mod for cash flow, so it's monthly money coming in. After 12 months, you may want to sell the reperforming note, okay? Now, one of the things that you're going to want your servicer to do, especially Land Home, who I use, they do a lot of this for me, is as they're going through the mod uh, screening and talking to the borrower, they'll screen to see if they're available for A, uh, hardest hit funds, and then also if they would qualify for an FHA 1023 refinance, okay, at 97.5% of fair market value. Now, that's a beautiful thing on that stuff. All right. So you have the mod. We try to get them to get uh, pre-screened with pre-finance, kind of a pre-approval or see, hey, if you do these things, they're going to qualify. You have FHA 1023 after three ledger payments, okay. Now, they will also, if it's in a state that has the hardest hit funds, They'll look for hardest hit fund, see if they can't qualify on the mod side. All right. So <clears throat> we go through those things, and honestly, you can go to where a successful mod they make payments, and then they stop making payments. All right. This stuff can change. So let's go back. Your bar desire is halfway. Maybe they want to leave then after they make a few payments. You can a have them either deed and lieu it. All right. Uh, cash for keys. We kind of throw that in the same thing. All right. You can all allow them to do a short sale. All right. If they do a deed in lieu with you, it's like a, uh, you know, it becomes your own REO at that point, provided it's got clean title. You can sell it on the open market, MLS with a realtor. You offer owner financing. Or you could do a, a rent it. You could rent it out if you want to. Uh, we've got here lease back to the bar or other, okay? I don't like to do lease back to the bar. If they haven't paid me mortgage payments, they're likely probably not going to make me a payment on a house that we made a payment on, you know what I mean? But one thing in here that's not mentioned is you could also allow them to find somebody to assume a loan. Take over the house with pre-approved financing, okay? You let them to assume a loan, all right? But if they decide that they want to stay and, you, and they want to list it with a realtor to try to sell a short sale, that's fine. I'd rather keep them the property. That way the utility is being taken care of. The property is not getting broke into, you know, um, you know, the copper goblins don't show up, <laughs> that kind of stuff. If you've got to foreclose, you've got to foreclose, and then it's either you can rent or sell it, or we talked about cash for keys, okay? Does everybody kind of get that on the occupied asset? Right? Obviously, there's multiple ways. You've got 
literally uh, on this was it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen almost twenty different scenarios that could happen with the week uh, with your occupied asset now the biggest thing you're going to happen most of the time is you're either hey it would be modded cash for keys or you foreclose you always have the right to no sale or wholesale it all off okay but those three to four things would be the biggest thing right okay? Anybody else got questions right now regarding what you do with an occupied asset? Your servicing company is going to be your biggest help with this. Now, your servicing company can also send out door knockers. They can send out site inspections. Um, if the borrower doesn't live in the house, but they've got, you've got another address, maybe it was an investment property, they're renting out, they can often do a site visit to the borrower's house. Okay. All right, quite, uh, Wayne asked a question. If they're a lien subordinate to mine and I do a cash for keys, do they come over to me or stay with a borrower? No. It depends. If they're liens and attached to the property, Wayne, it's like a junior lien. You're going to have to foreclose up, all right, or negotiate down. We did a deed in lieu on a property where before we signed the deed in lieu, we got the second to negotiate to go away for like 5% what was owed, all right? And then the other smaller liens, it was like 500 bucks and 1000 bucks. Instead of me wasting time to negotiate, I just paid those off to expedite time, all right? But before you accept a deed below, you want to double check the title. You may want to use Pro Title USA. You may want to also jump online and uh, or use uh, Richmond Monroe, help them pull title as well. Um, both of those companies are really good. They can review your documents. Uh, Richmond Monroe is going to hold on to your documents for you as a custodian. But uh, check your title, see what's junior, you know, what's a, a, a different lien in place behind yours. Okay, and what we're talking about right here, everybody, is just first liens. We're not talking about second liens. Second liens are a whole different. Much limited uh, extra strategy when it comes to seconds. That makes sense, uh, Wayne. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, let's see here. What kind of contact should you need for once a week, daily, twice daily? Should you need for your service? What do you mean? As far as you contacting your servicer or your servicer contacting the borrowers, Kevin? Um, if you're, I'll just cover both real fast. If you're reaching out to your service, you should probably have a phone call once a week, once every two weeks for sure, depending on the amount of notes you have and what the situation is. Okay? If it's with your borrower, they should be reaching out at least once a week, if not twice a week, to the borrowers. Okay? Um, during the modification process, uh, they should be reaching at least once a week. You know, that's why I like to have certification, uh, I mean, certified mail sent out. I like to see the letters that they're sending out. I want to see that stuff. Okay? Yeah, being as I already said that, we will be sending email that out to everybody. Okay? You can always go to my Facebook page. I'll just pull that up here real fast and download this directly. So we don't want to wait. Here, I'll just add this here real fast. How's that sound? If you want to download it, you can. Otherwise, I'll send out the PDF to you. There you go. So you click on it, it gets big like that. All right. All right. <clears throat> no problem, Wayne. No problem, Venus. Glad to help you guys out. All right. So, are there any other questions about the owner-occupied asset? All right. If there's not, we'll move on now. All right. So, you're buying a note, and it becomes vacant. You think it's occupied. That's what you want to go, but then it becomes vacant. You have a couple things you can reach out to. It's vacant. You can still reach out to the borrower. Still got to reach out to them in some form or fashion. Okay? If it's attempted and there's unsuccessful contact, then you can either A, sell the note off to somebody else. If they want to deal, if you don't want to deal with fix and flips, you don't want to deal with any type of rehab, if you're looking for solely for cash flow coming in, that may be the route you want to go. If you don't want to own the actual properties, you don't want to be in the rental business, that's fine. Okay? 
as I mentioned earlier, you're servicing a company. There's also companies out there you can hire that will go out there and do site visits. You, you know, contact it if it's unsuccessful. Maybe you can sell the note off to somebody else, depending on what state it in is and or how long it is in the foreclosure process. If it's started, if it's halfway, you can foreclose. Okay. All right. As you foreclose, you do the same thing as we talked about above up here. You can either rent the property out, keep it for a while, or you can sell it off. And sell it off that you know, sell it off traditionally, offer under financing, that kind of stuff. You can also too, uh, you, if you're offered under financing, you may depend on what they can bring the down take uh, down payments wise. You may carry financing for a while on that. Okay. Let's go back though. Let's say that it's successful contact. All right. Well, if there's successful contact, then, then you dive into the same things. Do we want to do a deed and loan? But do a deed and loan, there's no junior liens behind you that aren't going to fall into first if you accept the deed and loan, then it's like an REO. Okay, you can rent it out to them. Do a lease back if you want to do that. I don't recommend that, but that is an option some people have done. I actually was watching something on the plane on the way here, American Greed, about a company up in Albany, New York who was helping borrowers out in 2007, 2008, going out and get traditional loans and doing lease backs to people and keeping their house, and they keep their money, and the money coming in monthly. And they lost a ton of them uh, in three years. They, it was over like five to nine million dollars in cash flow. They come in, they didn't do anything. These people lost their houses and were all evicted. It's a really sad story. Anyway, check that out. Anyway, if you need a loan, they want to sell it, you want to sell it, yeah, great, you just sell it, listen on the open market. Okay. If you're getting a deed and loan, deed and loan is going to be valued, especially if you're buying it from another hedge fund, another seller, a deed and loan is going to be valued close to an REO sale size or site. Okay? One thing to keep in mind, you may want to uh, have pictures taken in the interior before you get a deed and loan from the borrowers. Okay? Uh, Justin asked a question, when you foreclose, how is the first mortgage treat? Well, you're buying the first lien. Okay? So you're the bank. All right? When you foreclose, it's you basically, you're right as the IOU or the mortgage to literally foreclose on the property as the collateral. So you're taking collateral based on the loan amount. All right? So you do have a right if you foreclose and you don't get back exactly what you paid for the note or what they owe, you have the right to 1099 the borrower for the remaining amount. So, um, yeah, we're not talking to New Orleans here. This is all first. There's some people that buy junior liens and that's fine. I buy first because it's easier to raise capital for them. You also have a lot more extra strategies. Okay, so you have the right. A also let's say to either sue on the note, sue on the mortgage, especially in cases maybe with the tax sale before you get involved, and or you find out. Uh, let's say you find out this is a second home and the borrower's got another property. You have the right to go slap a lien on the other person's on the property. If it turns out that you're not going to get your money back on in the property, you have the completely right to do that. Okay, get a judgment against them. All right, so let's say borrower's decision is they don't want to stay in the pro, uh, they want to do it. You can always offer up a short sale. Okay. All right. If it is a investment property, one thing that is not on here. If it's an investment loan, second lien home, a lot of times there are. Uh, Assignment of rent clauses in that note that you can take over and start collecting rents. Especially in the judicial state, you can literally take over receivership and start collecting the rents, especially in commercial deals, apartment deals, and some single family homes. Alan asked a question if a person has a bankruptcy, does that have impact the 1099? Uh, no. Uh, the only thing that impact, I mean, you still got to write the debt off if they can show to be insolvent when it comes to their taxes. Was it the IRS Form 928 where they show they have more going out and more going in? Um, they're not going to pay taxes on that 1099. It's just IRS Form 928. Right? All right. <clears throat> in some rare cases, <laughs> they agreed to do the short, so that's fine. Great. That's awesome. I would get an independent realtor. I would not have them hire somebody. So listen, we'll hire have a realtor reach out to you. Okay? One of the big things, if you're reaching out and doing some of your loss mitigation yourself as well, make sure to get contacts. Hey, I need a phone. I need a phone number, your work number, I need an email address, and I need your physical address so I can send you documents. Give me your email, and I will ship everything out to you. Okay. One of the things that happen with deed and lose a lot of times they drag on. The same thing with mods, they drag on because the bars to get around to doing it. So you always have to have some sort of 
expedite time. Hey, I need you. I'm going to ship this out today. I need you to sign this and get it back to me on Friday. Otherwise, the attorneys will be contacting you. Don't play nice. You want to keep that pressure on the borrowers. Okay. Now, let's say the borrower does want to move back in the property. Maybe they realize, hey, they can reinstate in some sort of fashion. That's a good thing. They reinstate. Then you start getting payments again. You get a chunk of money, and then it becomes a reperforming note. You can sell a reperforming note off after a period of time. Or you hold on to it, and that's great. You don't have to put any foreclosure costs, no attorney costs, besides just minimal documents. You don't have to rehab the property. Literally, somebody's going to move in and take care of it. That's a win-win. All right? Okay? If they don't want to reoccupy the property, you do a short sale or a mod, and the mod you can either keep or sell, that's normal, uh, or go from there. Or they can do a short payoff with you as well. I've had that happen on some investment properties where the borrowers were investors, and it was an investment property. So we agreed to a settlement. I bought the note at 8. We settled at 20 or 25. My VP of operations, Stephanie, did this on one uh, where it was vacant, and there's an older gentleman living in the property. It was a 55 plus community, and his son came in and actually did a short payoff with Stephanie. And she made like 75% ROI on the deal, which was pretty phenomenal. <laughs> All right. Questions regarding this stuff. One of the things uh, I'll throw out there as well, um, you're going to want to check taxes. If you're getting a mod and all that stuff, you want to check taxes. Yeah, I know. And you're going to want to check uh, insurance, right? Your servicing company can actually help that out with most of the time. A lot of your servicing companies will have that ability to either A, throw property insurance on almost fourth place, and then also do tax review. Okay. Questions? The idea is you're going to have some flow along the way. I think buying owner-occupied assets, you've got obviously a few more extra strategies, the FHA 23 with also the hardest hit funds in the 16 states are still allowing it, they're still offering that up, All right, which is done on here. now. Hardest hit funds are only good for unoccupied and first liens. Okay? Okay, not for seconds, they're only good for first liens. You've got to kind of you've got to really be very forceful with your borrowers on this on these different routes. Okay? It's important that you do that to help keep things moving along. Okay? One of the funds that I've worked with. I have bought a lot of notes from them. One of their biggest things is they'll buy a pool of notes, occupied assets, and they'll do some borrower contact. If the borrower doesn't respond within 30 days or 60 days, they will sell the note off to somebody else let them deal with it. They'll send a, a mailer out to the borrower and say, hey, you instantly qualify for this, this, and this. All right? But you've got to respond within 30 days. All right? If they don't respond, then they're selling that note off because they're trying to make a quick 5 to 10% return on their investment and recycle that money, getting it into money that will be long-performing stuff. Okay? Question. Uh, any wisdom to share about redemption? What do you personally look for? What do you mean by redemption? Are you talking about uh, redemption periods like in Florida where you bought a note and they haven't paid in four years? Okay. Uh, a couple of things about the redemption period. <laughs> things that reset the redemption period. A, either the lender has started the foreclosure, Liz Penance knows the default within that time frame, and each state's a little bit different about redemption periods. Uh, the borrower's paid at least a dollar. They paid at least a dollar. That usually resets it. Along with that, you also have the right, if there's seven years of back payments, you can forgive those three years, if it's a four-year redemption period, you can give those back back three and a half years of payments and go after them starting new with the three years. Okay. So that's the thing. You want to talk to your servicing company about that. But literally, it's amazing sometimes that dollar payments show up in the mail via money order that get paid. You know what I mean? Uh, if my uh, computer does go dead, everybody, I apologize. Uh, we're on the, its last legs here, but we got through a lot of the stuff. Go to power saver here. Since I got 12 minutes, if stuff shows up sooner in 12 minutes, <laughs> we'll extend it. But otherwise, we're gonna run out of juice here pretty fast. 
unfortunately did not uh, get packed. Any other questions regarding this? Uh, cash for keys is a good question. Somebody just asked me here. I actually deleted it because without an order. Uh, cash for keys would be five hundred bucks. I spent the ten thousand dollars for cash for keys. I had somebody want five grand. I looked at the with five grand back taxes. Like, no, you're not getting any of that because I'm going to go paying your back taxes that you owe. And they agreed. Okay, yes, can I get five hundred bucks at least? I'm like, yeah, I'll give you five hundred bucks. Okay. How do we avoid buying that note sold after 30 days of attempted right party contact? Banati, great question. Um, you're going to answer servicing notes. Hey, who's been servicing this? Has right party contact been made? All right. This is where having the status of that, yes, is a potential deed in lieu or a potential short sale or it's a foreclosure. You see a lot of foreclosures on the list of stuff. Like Granite, Granite's been great about that. The past years are kind of giving a servicing breakdown, potential mod or a loan mod initiated, short sale, deed in lieu. All right. If that's one of the things I would ask in your due diligence, hey, have you had any chance? Okay. Some funds will just, you know, if it's been servicing for a while, it's one of the big things to ask. Hey, who's been servicing it? How long is it in the foreclosure process? Is notice of default? Is this pen been started? Okay. Those are the key things to ask of the servicer or the seller. And see if you can get the servicing notes involved on it. And, and William, in response to your question from earlier, they emailed me about the, the realtors having uh, asking for fees and stuff like that. Just move on to a different one. Okay. Uh, Michael asked some additional strategies with selling and renting. Yeah, you can lease option or seller finance besides outright sale. Yeah, that's, I said that already, Mike. But the selling part's the easy part. That's a whole different thing. We're not really, I mean, that's all lumped in an outright sale. Okay, that's what we I mean by that. I don't really focus a lot on lease options. I mean, I'm in such a good place most of the time. If I'm not going to keep it as a rental, I'm just going to sell straight out for the most part. I'll do seller financing occasionally. But lease options, I, I, I don't want to waste my time on that, okay? I'd rather sell or finance get payments where I'm having to deal with things uh, versus that. But, yeah, you can do whatever you want with the asset once it's yours. Hello, everybody. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> ah, yeah. Uh, literally, as my computer died, Stephanie knocked on my door um, with a replacement. So lucky enough, we got it out, plugged it back in. So we are back up and running there. <laughs> ah, all right, all right. And for some reason, my mic got on, my the computer was not working, so I had to dial in on my cell phone here, which is just kind of funny. So, yes, you can keep me down, but not for long. All right, so uh, let's see here. Is Christina back here? Christina asked the question, can you explain a little more about the short payoff? Does that mean that the payoff is off all at once at that time? Um, it can be or it cannot be, Christine. It's whatever you can negotiate with a borrower. Now, most of the time, it's always best to get a lump amount, right? But depending on your situation, maybe you have the borrower pay. It's maybe it's hundred grand. Maybe they're paying twenty grand each month. It's whatever you can negotiate. Okay. Uh, my buddy Jay he's got a, a, a borrower to pay on a note deal that he paid like eighteen hundred bucks for. Property's worth twelve. He's got to pay sixteen. But it was in like three over three months. Three grand right now, four grand right now, five grand right now, and the rest on the fourth month. Okay. Good question though. Uh interesting these books. What 
other questions? Now, um, in some states, there's a uh, oh, nice. All right. Thank you all. I forgot it was over. In some states, you've got tax sales, tax certificates being sold, where the tax are sold up once a year, or like the back of the year. And so that's something to keep in mind, too, as you're going through the scenarios they have a tax today, or they have a tax payment plan. There's a huge amount of taxes owed. A lot of people can't afford the maximum amount of taxes owed. So, and you as the bank, a lot of times, can't negotiate with accounting for the, a payment plan for the borrower can. So in some situations, we kept the bar in the property, but we got this a call and a tax payment plan where we covered like the first half, and they paid that off over the next few to us. All right? So that's something to look in your mind, screening stuff, and the taxes paid, the uh, insurance on the property. Okay? Your mind payments, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is you want to keep your payments below what rent would cost, but not a huge little below. All right? You gotta realize that people, if they're gonna move out, they gotta move into something. And they're gonna probably rent. So that's about what you get. As always, you see, I would be getting nothing less than four months of back payments, at least four months. I usually like to try to get five grand uh, on a regular basis, but at least four months of back payments before I agree to modify or reinstate the loan. One thing to keep in mind on the performing notes side up here, whether it's the up here or down here, to get the best price for your re-performing notes, you need to have at least 12 months of on-time payments, ledgered payments. And that'll get you 80, 85 cents a dollar, maybe 90 cents a dollar, depending on the yield of the interest rate and that kind of stuff. All right? I know you guys got more questions. One of the biggest things that you should do is always have something to put eyes and ears on. Even if they tell you it's occupied, go out and have somebody take a look at the property. Or if somebody you know locally, maybe it's a realtor, maybe use we go look at uh, 49 bucks a, uh, a shot. You have a BPO agent with valuation vision go do that for you. Try to always put somebody's eyes on the property before you foreclose. They'll obviously save you a lot of heartache when you realize, oh, it's trash, or there's water coming out of the property. You know, it's probably not an occupied property at that point. Or there's a big hole in the side. <laughs> or it's just in the front, but there's a ton of trash in the back. It's a Wild West town house. What's that mean? Well, it looks all good for the front, but it's just a facade. There's nothing in the back. It's like driving through Disney or Universal Studios. It looks great in the front, but uh, there's nothing behind here except the two by fours holding the front up. You don't want that. Uh, William asked a question, when do you, uh, do you ever just add late payments and arrears to the back end? Yeah, I will do that all the time, William, but I I want them to, they've got to bring some money. They've got to bring some skin in the game. If they're watching, one of these I'll ask, how big is your TV? And they say it's 55 inches. Yeah. I'm going to make sure they bring some skin. <laughs> All right, good. Get ready to go sell that thing. <laughs> uh, that's correct. All right. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, okay, one of the things to keep in mind is if you modify a loan, the IRS wants to tax you on the full amount of the value of the loan, the loan mod. Okay? And you get the capital gains on that. The way to offset that is to have a third independent third party give you a valuation on that note. 
So let me give you an example. So you pay a five, five grand for a note that becomes a modification of fifty grand. Well, I need to have a third party tell me that that note is less than fifty grand, so I'm going to pay tax on it. So third party, I've done this for some people. I'll do this for my mastermind group. They send me, hey, what's the value of this loan bond? I'll say, well, what you pay for the note? Five grand. Well, really, it's only worth five grand until you collected twelve months of payments. Can we all agree that everybody? So I'll just say, listen, it's only worth five grand up on my standby. It's only worth five grand, and they can provide that in case in a situation that it's ever been. I'm going to need to a third party, okay? But it helps, it limits their tax liability to exactly what they pay for them at that point, okay? And then it's only, then it's only tax when the cash flow comes in. Um, Stephen asked a question, can you charge more than the original amount if you do a work out with a bar? Say it's 300. Can you do this for 500? Yeah, you can do that. You can do whatever the, as long as the bar agrees to you, you can do a lot of things. Okay. Uh, one of your third parties, you got to be a third party source. It just can't be your brother. I wouldn't make it somebody you really need to be a an appraiser or a note investor or somebody. I'll put my name on it and stuff like that. It's always a good thing. Question here. Can you talk about, Brittany asked me, can you talk about due diligence outside supporting title and pulling credits? What else do you do to research properties before you buy? Uh, great question, Brittany. One of the things we do is we check uh, your built, bed, bath, square footage. We'll check a rental meter. Uh, I spent the whole, uh, I spent basically <laughs> half a Saturday and a large chunk of Sunday in my office is doing some due diligence initially on a pool of uh, notes we're going to buy. Now, I, I Google mapped them, and we all agree Zillow and, and Truly are way off when it comes to values. We looked at that stuff, but I also ordered uh, ABMs. I had valuation vision pulled ABMs. I'm going to give them recent holds in the market. So here, I'll just show it to you guys. So a uh, big chunk. Where is it here? That's no, no, no. Hang on, let me. You just pull it up here. Uh, how do you gain access to Lexus Nexus? You hire a kid trace, Maurice. That's the only way to do it. Okay, the private eye. So it depends on, like, I'll jump online and uh, I Google Maps of these properties and I look at the photos based on Google Maps. Now, a large chunk of the properties were actually the pictures were taken in the last six months. I was like, okay, it looks like it's occupied, looks pretty good. All right, I'll take it. Now, if it was more than a year old, if it was more than six months or more than a year old, I. Uh, We'll figure this out. Luckily, the hedge fund told me it's occupied or it's vacant abandoned property. On the vacant abandoned properties, I gave a reduced value on that, unless, of course, the picture was within six months on Google Maps. All right? And then I looked at the neighborhood. The neighborhood's really nice. There's probably less uh, vandalism. And there's some boarded up buildings. This one's probably got some people broke into it. I also will check online when I have the borrower's information to see if they got a LinkedIn, Facebook account, social media stuff, because those are ways we can reach out to, to people. All right. But it's important to check days on market. It's one of the big important things about your AVMs. If it's worth paying the 15 bucks per note, per line item, because you'll get comps and sold. So let me get let me, let me just pull this up here. All right. So, like this, here's an example. Come on, open up, baby. That's not what I'm looking for here. Come on. There we go. All right. So I've got this spreadsheet here. Bunch of assets. And what I did is I immediately sent it over, took the list, just sent it over to valuation missions, sent an email to them. And what they do is they add in this other stuff. This status if there's a hit or no hit. Uh, they give me their estimated value. Like this one, they estimated value to 24.8. Okay. 
Um, what's it let off here? It's a little bit different. Let me give you a different nibble. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this one here. Mileage minutes, you give it a 19,800 value. They get a common score of 78,000. If I click on here, this is the valuable thing that's linked. This takes me to one page ABM. Now, it's not a BPO. It's not a BPO. But like this one in Cleveland, ABM was at 19.8. What I like is I have my little of the different comps. You can see the stuff here. All up in this thing. I don't need to get the bed baths for Fujimix in there. Okay. Um, land value, improvement value, so this is not exciting at all. Okay. But it gives you some comps. Let me go back to a different one here. A little better example of one that's not so let's get in here. Like this one here in Brushwood. All right. This one in Minneapolis. This is you Brushwood Road. All right. Three bedroom, one bath. 1,064 square feet, both in 62, current owners on it, Jacob Birchman and Susan Birchman. Um, doesn't say the sales, but you should, there are no fireplace, basement vintage areas, they don't know. Attached garage, one story. Okay. So they give you the value running around 83, but they say high market might be 101, low market in 67.4. Now they've got 80% confidence that. The property's in decent condition, that's where it's going to fall in. Okay. But this right here gives me good comps. And you can see 88, 92, 86. These other ones I would be thrown away. So they pull the top 20 comps near it. All right. So that gives me a number that, hey, let's, let's go to the side this as well. 6340 Brushwood Road. It's in there for me searching. So let's just click on here. So you all want the photos online, right? See this one, it looks vacant. Alright. Uh, this could be from May 2012. If it looks vacant like that, I don't think it's worth 88, it's worth less than that. Because right, see it looks like it needs to work. Okay. Uh, neighborhood doesn't look bad. You know, a lot of private ownership. Okay. But it's going to need some work. So I'm going to say it's on the lower side of that. So, so my offer that went out actually dropped to 35000 that we figured value was. Okay. Because it needs some work. If it's sitting vacant for a while, it's not worth 84 It's going to need some work. Okay. But like this one, uh, like this one, Civil Avenue. Akron, 31 wine, two bedroom, one and a half bath, 768 square feet. You see the price range fall in there. Okay. Ricky Grover and Sandra Wheeler, 282 Civil Avenue. One See another one. This property picture was taken June 2011. All right, a couple of years old. We get some private ownership. People have to clean in. It's not bad. If it, now, if this is June 2014, I would really value it at the value that they gave me here. So their value initially, um, see, I tell you, it's probably at 31. But if we look at their value, they're 56. These guys give it 42. I, I dropped the value down on that to 11 grand just because of, A, it's, uh, it doesn't look that exciting. Especially based, could it be 42? Yeah, it could be 42, but I doubt it. I'm going to say it's closer to 31. Does that make sense, Brittany? Cool. You 
you are welcome. Now, we haven't checked taxes on this stuff yet because I'm waiting. Our values are quite a bit off based on um, where the seller was wanting the stuff at. I mean, we were literally off, like, we are more than halfway off what they thought their values were. And so, you know, I'm not going to check taxes yet. I'm going to say the values on this stuff. It's in our bid this minus taxes out. Come from a two and a half million dollar bid to like 1.2, 1.1, without taxes being deducted from it. But their BPOs were from last uh, 2013, so almost two years old. Okay, a lot of things can happen on houses at that point. On stuff that's a mobile home, where they say it looks like a single family home, and I looked online, it's actually a mobile home. I give it lower value than that. Don't care if it's attached. It still doesn't have the same type of value that a single family home. Right. So taxes are owed. You're not paying the full price. Full price. Yeah. If, well, I mean, if it's five hundred bucks or thousand bucks, what we do? I'm not going to get too bent on a ship. If it's like 2014 taxes, I don't care. That's fine. But if it's like 2013, 2010, 2011, 2012, yeah, they're they're working on deduct my bid. If I bid nine grand, there's two grand back taxes owed. So my bid will drop down to seven grand. No problem, Stephen. What other questions do we have, everybody? <laughs> Joseph asked a question. I previously saw you mentioning the updated home study manual. Any progress on that? Yes. It's uh, a little bit of a process. We're working on that. That's part of the reason we delayed the St. Louis workshop, giving a little more time on that because it is a priority. So, yeah. Uh, we, we filmed our Anaheim workshop, and there's some stuff in there. We're going to upload that. I found out that the audio was kind of great. So we kind of scrapped that and literally going to spend some time literally in front of the camera, refilming everything for you all to have something that's a little bit different than the actual workshop. Um, AG asked a question, where can I find other first lien non-performing note servicers? Just type in loan service, note servicers. Okay? You can go to Lane Guide, type that in there, and once you sign up for Lane Guide. Uh, Chris, this question, did I put an offer in on that? Uh, yeah, I did initially, yeah, because I want to make sure, I don't want to do a lot more work on it if they're not going to get the values. If they're going to get pissy and say, oh, my values are way low, that's great, adjust it. Okay. Adjust it. Let's see where they come back. If they're not going to agree on values, it's not worth, not worth wasting any time on it. Okay. Uh, Stephen, I don't have a workshop next month. I just have a workshop in April in Chicago. The St. Louis workshop has been uh, rescheduled for a later time. Okay. Stephen, uh, the P and D stuff was pretty bad. Okay. Well, we get more questions popping in now. Nice. Okay. If you have a list of sources for ABM, yeah, there's different valuation companies. Just go up there and say, is there uh, valuation of BPO companies? All right. I use Valuation Division. It's 15 bucks a line for me running ABM for me. Okay. Uh, Richmond Monroe, it's not an escrow type relationship. And Richmond Monroe is a collateral and due diligence. They'll help you out by reviewing the files. They will pull title for you. But they're a collateral company, not a escrow type company. Escrow is not, they're not going to hold funds. Okay. Uh, Maurice, I don't deal in, in hard money loans on manufacturing loans. I have no idea. Don't know anybody would do that. Arlene, the next mastermind is in San Antonio, Texas, like it's always been. And it's actually going to be the 23rd through the 27th of March. 23rd through the 27th of March in San Antonio, Texas. Okay. 
Stephanie will have final hotel stuff out. She's supposed to have a contract on that today or uh, last week. So you'll get a notice of that. You can go ahead and book your airfare on the 23rd through the 27th. Okay? <laughs> What do you do if the original note was lost for an NP invite? I'm not understanding the question. If the original note is lost, you get a lost note affidavit often, which will replace it. Richmond and Monroe can help you with that. It's one of the things you can have Richmond Road review your files. The electronic copies most of the time. Most sellers are going to give you the hard collateral file, but they can review the files and say, hey, this is what's missing. This would, you know, this little cost for us to get probably the time frame for it. Uh, I'm in California. I'm in San Diego. Yes. Chilling like a mill in San Diego. It's starting to be. I think a couple hours was four o'clock here, and it's like what <laughs> seven o'clock back there in dark in New York for you, Bonnie. All right, Chris has the question here. Once uh, my offer, the, if they accept the offers, which we're already going at, we're going to check taxes, okay? And while the collateral reviewed by Richmond Monroe, we'll send electronic files over Richmond Monroe. They'll do a collateral file, daily letter. It will make sure everything's uh, hunky dory on that aspect. Okay. Taxes are good, and then property condition looks even better. Make sure nothing's burned out. We're going to let agents move all to take a look at that stuff. Depending on what we're funding, it, um, our, uh, our hedge fund, our PPNs in the works are being finished up, so we're working on that. If they're going to that, we'll do a little bit more extra due diligence just as otherwise with the filter and we'll see a for us drive by. I thought you'd like to see. I thought this would be a really good thing for you. Uh, most everybody in the call, but I thought you and Kathy would really enjoy this flowchart. And I'll tell you a funny story. I did not create it. <laughs> Grant Loan Solutions actually sent this out a while back, and I saw it from Mark Gold. Mark had actually changed it for his the American Recovery Fund. I'm like, dude, send that to me. It's great. So it's a lot of the same, same stuff. I just changed the logo and on everybody. <laughs> but see, it's a strong piece. And it helps answer a lot of questions, right, everybody? Phyllis, you asked questions. Is there an average cost per month per NPN? I'm not on what? Servicing, Richmond Monroe with due diligence, just cost to me. Servicing on a non-performing note is probably cost you depending on how much loss and negation you're doing, anywhere from a flat $30 fee if you're just going to board it up to 80 to 100 bucks. What I always do is I average out about a thousand bucks a year uh, for due to, uh, for servicing per note because in some cases you're going to have some hit factor but they're going to charge you to do a loan mod or to do a loan so there's some fees involved so I just throw a thousand bucks for servicing 3500 for foreclosure costs okay Uh, do I prefer to work my notes yourself or to have the servicer? I prefer to have the servicer. I have way too many notes uh, for me to try to do them all. Okay, you want to go with scalability here, everybody. Okay, now, don't get me wrong. We do some things where we do reach out. To, uh, we'll do mail blast about once a quarter, or we'll send out certified letters and things like that to get them to, to boost. But no, most of the time, the phone calls will be handled by uh, Lando, what they're paid to do. But in some states, I can't physically re literally reach out to the bar. You've got to be licensed in the state to actually do it. Like, uh, an example, um, Massachusetts requires it, North Carolina, uh, Georgia, especially if you're buying notes in Georgia, they want you to be a licensed mortgage broker. 
if you own more than four in, in the state. Um, so no, I, I don't I don't do a lot of personal reach out. I mean you can, there's things we do occasionally, but for the most part no. Uh, what software are you using to keep track of all your assets? <clears throat> William asked. We use a combination of Networks and Excel. Networks with uh, Mark Gold. We use a combination of both. All right. Plus, it looks nice with uh, Landhome. Their portal, they have adds nicely so I can literally log in and see where the servicing notes and, and where they're going with each asset, which helps out. And the fact that they'll do insurance and tax mon monitoring now, it's, it's kind of nice having it all in one spot. Any other questions? Well, if there's no other questions, we'll wrap up, up for the evening, everybody. Uh, no, Marcus, the, the valuation was at 35. That was not my offer. My offer was basically about 35 cents of the dollar of that, so about nine to 10 grand. Brittany, I buy anywhere from a one-off note all the way up to 60, 70, 100 notes at a time. It spins in the pool. I literally uh, was talking with one of my sellers today who just uh, purchased 1,200 notes, and he's going to have the ability to sell a lot of stuff. So yeah, I'm it's been a source I've been working on for a while. 1,200 notes, 1,206 notes to be exact. So uh, we're looking to buy a large chunk of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Albert, not a problem. If you paid for the St. Louis workshop, you could get a refund back on what you paid. It's not a problem at all. Yeah, I totally respect that, and we're not trying to hold on to anybody's money for that. Okay. All right. Uh, Las Vegas noteworthy. That's in October. Hang on a second. Um, yeah, but that's fine. We talk. Uh, just drop me an email. Uh, see you next Monday, right, Maurice? Next Monday. Next Monday, I'll be in. Uh, uh, yeah, next Monday night, I'll have another webinar. Brittany, it's going to vary on each situation. Depending on what the situation may be performing, it's, it just varies. Okay. Milton, my masterminds for my uh, my milk metric students. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll drop an email with your number, and I'll give you a phone call. I've got a phone call right after the, the webinar tonight. Somebody. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Las Vegas Network will be in October. The East Coast Network will be here, everybody. You can see. Uh, Brittany, out of 10 notes on average, you can get three to four that are going to modify. Uh, two to three, two to four that will four. You'll have to get a deed link from the rest. You're going to have to foreclose. Okay. All right. So. I think we've been covering the questions. I do have my next workshop again in Chicago there, April 23rd to the 28th. And then we also have, uh, oops, hang on here, it's 999 two for one. You can sign up for weeklosenotes.com at that. And there's another convention in, in uh, actually Newark, New Jersey in April. I don't have a date yet for the Las Vegas one, but that's something to keep in mind. I'll be sending an email out to everybody regarding uh, the noteworthy convention. All right. Um, the charts, no, Maurice, the Vimeo is just for video, so you'll be able to get a replay of this. What I'll do is I'll upload these slides to SlideShare, and then you can download that slide as well. And I'll send out, actually, it's a PDF that I've got it saved on. I'll send an email out uh, either later tonight or tomorrow with the, the slide everybody that was on the call. Okay. SlideShare.net. Once you've got Carson, we'll have the PowerPoint slides. Okay. All right, everybody. We will wrap it up then. Thank you for being patient with the little uh, power thing. Hopefully this recording has been recording the entire time. Um, glad you enjoyed it, Robert. Uh, 
Mike, yeah, I'll look at it. Uh, Mike, you're going to have better luck talking to actual getting another email blast out your database versus doing Lindy. All right. All right, guys. Uh, Mike, I'll try to answer via email. Good evening, y'all. Talk to y'all later.